Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here with the 28th episode in our first YouTube run through Book of Hours, playing as the artist or the artiste. I will leave it to your judgment as to whether or not uh, which pronunciation is the most appropriate. So today we were going to uh, take advantage of the season. We're going to uh, hire another orchard keeper to basically uh, unlock another another step down the well. Uh, we may not have the advantage of the weather in the form of um, of the rain, but that's fine because we have an earth sign, which I'm not likely to use as part of a uh, part of a reading. And then on top of that, we will also try and get Mrs. Kill to uh, open up a um, open up another room. So let's start. Assistance from an orchard keeper. In autumn, orchard keepers come to sell their wares at Brand Crew. A shilling will buy one's help. Now we did say that we needed the. Uh, we needed to. We need the pears for the orchard keeper, so I'm going to use the core for that because the health will be used to improve the orchard keeper. Uh, we can use kind of anything here. We'll use rights to the roots in this case. Now, if I can, I'd like to make a witching to sane, but I might be limited in terms. Actually, you know what? I can make a witching to sane at the at Ava's desk, so we'll be good there. Uh, let's grab Mrs. Kill. So, Mrs. K sorry. Mrs. Kill, the midwife, is tall and gloomy. Mr. Kill, the undertaker, is slight and wry. For ten years, she has drawn villagers into the world, and he has shaped cradles for their departure. But she can also whittle, and he can also paint. Mrs. Kill's mood always improves when I drop by. Mrs. Kill stands ready to help. You always cheer me up, she says morosely. Now, uh, I think probably the best bet would be for me to get the satisfaction directly... Uh, again, so we'll use the Faust in this case. We will read Factory's Herbary. Maybe I should start reading the books again. So I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. So we've got the memories that we need for my um, my hirelings. We'll use the Arab to boost Mrs. Kill. So if I can, I'd like to use the Trist to boost up desires and dissolutions. But let's see what the weather brings. Fog. Okay, that actually changes quite a bit of the calculation. Okay. So in autumn, the orchard keepers come to sell their wares at Brand Krug. A shilling will buy one's help. So, um, the reason this changes things... So first of all, we've got a couple of knock texts. So if I wanted to roll the dice, we've got door and wall. Door and wall with fog would bring it up to five. I don't have a tool, but the likelihood of getting a, you know, a higher level knock, it's, you know, there there is a possibility there. Um, more interesting, though, would be Desires and Dissolutions, because basically with Desires and Dissolutions, we have five. With the Fog, we have eight. With the Trist, we have nine. And then with the Lunar Globe, we have ten. And if I recall correctly, there was a ten moon text in our possession. So that is the more interesting use for me. Okay, not that one. Okay, these are all in languages I don't understand. Okay, so we've got the Queen's turn. Is that really just one? Even if it's one, it's worth it. Okay. So we'll use Ava's desk for that. We take the Trist, the Fog, Desires and Dissolutions. And then we bring the Lunar Globe. All right, moon a culmination. I can master this mystery. Enough moon to match mystery moon. So that might leave me short on uh, being able to make the witching to sane, but honestly, if that's the sacrifice for today, I think I can live with it. I should be boosting the orchard keeper right away. So as usual, I'll take care of the hireling first, just because that's money that's been spent already. <laughs> After that, we'll boost up Mrs. Kill, 
Right, we'll work alongside each other. So next up we will use... I guess I can use the Earth sign right away. We may even use the FET to record, uh, to renew it, but it would be nice to... Um, it would be nice to try and uh, make the witching to Zane first. Okay, Fekri's Herbery, the early wisdom of Eason Fekri, at that point a traveling healer, much later secretary salvant of the Curia of the Isle. As a Skaptodon, Eason may consume only that which is found in the earth, so he's best with root lore. Eason identifies a pale seaweed found in the beaches of Cornwall as a useful source of rose and winter aspect. His tone here is a little guilty, perhaps because he's showing an interest in sea produce, which might be thought unwise for a Scaptodon, and perhaps because his proposal is to name it Ava's Lock. Uh, sorry, and perhaps because his proposal to name it Ava's Locks suggests a tiny crush on the Pale Lady of Brandkrug. Okay. Cake bowls, mixing bowls, kitchen bowls. Can lend my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. Here's the pears. Those are going to go straight into the orchard keeper, so we won't worry too much about uh, finding a place for them. Oh, you know what? I was wrong. Okay, so we've got them up to six, but I don't need to go any further. It's actually the dandelion wine that I need, if I remember correctly. So let me just take a minute to think this through. So we've given them... So collaboration, that's an element of the soul. Memory, um, tool. And I can even verify this by looking at collaboration. So we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, which means only food and drink are available. And dandelion wine technically isn't renewable, but it's, um, it's an obvious candidate. Serve appropriately, pour out. Yeah, I guess in this case we can we can put those uh, that on the kitchen table. Board out. So that's the eight nectar we needed. I can offer my assistant something to drink, and then we'll start working with Mrs. Kill as soon as as soon as that happens. So we'll see what's waiting for us on the other end of this text. I'm not 100% sure. I don't really have that much of a memory for what the um, what skills come out of certain books. I'm starting to get a bit of a memory for the memories. But The Queen's Turn, a 16th century translation of the Barrow Child's account of Lagia's Turn, where Lagia, the Queen unsated, was offered the opportunity to enter the service of the Hours of the Triple Knot, as long as she repudiated her brother, lover, Antaios. Lagia accepts, setting aside the arts of the low red sun associated with Antaios. She bargains, however, for freedom for her daughters. The Hours of the Triple Knot accept casually, knowing that Lagia has devoured her daughters, but Wily Lagia has decided in, in the secret hollow of her heart that she will adopt any who ask, if they can prove their fierceness. The traditions described here, the ones generally described as hill and hollow, are associated with Lagia before her turn, but now she's a name of the Red Grail, they might also be safely used before an, uh, uh, sorry, before an altar of the Triple Knot. So that's one that I actually want to rate, make a handwritten note on. Um, I have a hypothesis about these um, instructions here. So, the Queen's turn... 
Uh, that was one for salt. I'm gonna guess this one. Okay, so first hill in Hollow is pretty simple. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. So this requires moon or scale. Now, I do have an element of the soul. You know what? I think this is a case where I'd be willing to spend some money to recover. So Tuppence will buy me a hearty meal in a quiet place where I can rest and gather my thoughts. It is autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook. Uh, and I suppose now the question is... Okay, so I know what Hill and Hollow needs. So the question at this point is, is there a fancy way that I can somehow get a Witching to Sane out of um, a Fet and a... and Desires and Dissolutions? Because I don't think any of the other ones are going to settle this. Okay, so I need Moth. Basically, Moth and Grail. No. I wonder. Aha! A show still rings with the thwarted desires. I'll mix that into a Tissane. Down to the Greshens. All right, so. Copper, crowded, descent, leaves, flowers, and thorns. Especially thorns. Let's get Mrs. Kill boosted up. I can discuss the memory with my assistants. So we're halfway through the day. We should be in good shape with getting Mrs. Kill, especially given the fact that we're probably going to go for one of the more modest um, increases. I do have the option of the dim hall, um, but I don't really know. Well, I mean, it's either or, right? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do both at some point. Um, so I'm gonna wait on uh, my Trist to boost Hill and Hollow again, and that will move up to the. Exalted group. I might have been able to get by without um, without using the uh, without recovering the um, the tryst, but it's just so much easier when I have the the salt sitting there. Or Flams thanks you for your continued interest. This book may become available for purchase again later. It just gives me this nice sort of tidy kind of finale for the for the day. So we can go Hill and Hollow, and a Trist, and Salt. There's always more to learn. That may also wind up having some implications for the books that I can read. No, it's primarily Moon, so I think we already have a two-scale skill. Maybe not. Oh, yeah. Serpents and Venoms. Okay, well, that's fine. It's best when it's warm, but it'll keep. So I suppose if I want, you know, I can talk with Mrs. Kill and open up the dim hall. All right, the well descent. Rungs line the well's side. This must, uh, this must lead down to the oldest part of the isle, to the shrines of the sisterhood. It may be that the servants of the DeWolf family still came here in secret, even while they paid lip service to the rites of the unconquered son. So this is an interesting uh, one. So first of all, there's some neat items in here. Uh, we've got the shears of the sisterhood, black iron shears marked with sisterhood's triple knot, animal bones, what remains, and an aglophotus scented candle, a candle scented with aglophotus. We can also go further uh, through the root thong thronged descent. The roots here are a labyrinth of years. How long is it since anyone passed this way? So that is nine heart, nine nectar, or nine scale. And if you think about it, if we could get to eight, well, we can get to nine just using the pears and the dandelion wine again. So I'm very tempted to do that, but I am going to need to get the... Um, 
I'm going to need to read the text, uh, the text again. But we have everything that we need uh, in order to be able to um, to make that work. All right. Uh, you know what? I think I am going to feed with it the same. So a nice drop. I can offer my assistant something to drink. I don't know. There's something about me that always likes to go for the uh, the most difficult challenge first, um, just because it means that I it potentially frees me up from from doing something uh, something else. Now we will be using up the bottle for the dandelion wine, but I don't think that's a hardship. I mean, these things do exist to be consumed. So pour out homemade flower wine. Pour it out. And here we go. The skill is now level two. Its power aspects have also increased. So we don't really need the moon, but I'm happy. Um, I'm happy to just have this leveled up. Okay, so on to the dim hall. The walls are hung with weapons. Uh, as I say, the threshold, my whis sorry, a whisper troubles the still air, and a pair of wall-hung swords glints menacingly. More of Van Loren's protections. They seem much stronger on the seaward than the landward side of the house. One might begin to wonder if they are intended to protect against outsiders at all. So we don't have anything else to do with our elements of the soul, and we've just taken our last follower, uh, put them in the um, the dim hall. Yeah, tomorrow we will definitely move uh, Mrs. Kill to the Rose Haunted Hall, um, and depending on how the day goes, I don't think it would hurt for me to try and hire the Orchard Keeper and basically do the same thing that we did previously. I don't even necessarily need to worry about the replacement witching to sane, but hey, it doesn't hurt. Um, it's just nice to kind of have this stuff sitting in reserve. But at that point, that's sort of when I need to start thinking about who I'm hiring, you know, what my main goals are, and perhaps uh, committing certain, uh, certain skills to the Tree of Wisdoms to allow myself a bit more reach. All right, let's tidy up the library a little bit. I'll read that in just a second. Hmm. I really would have thought I could get an extra book in there. Anyway, let's um, try and make the most of it. I'm mostly just trying to get out of this situation where the astrolabe gets in the way. Okay. In baronial times, this was a ballroom, but in the 19th century, during Berlot's time as librarian, a diet of eternally dueling Edgelong agreed to stay at Hush House for a year and a day to, to allow Natalia to study them, if she satisfied certain conditions. A properly equipped space was one of those conditions. Ultimately, the business turned out to be a trap or a trick played by one or both of the dyad, and they left after only a single battle. Their names are recorded as Mr. Stierde and Father Torg. Lots of details in this room. So we have the practice equipment, still the best place of the house to get hurt. We have uh, Azita's practice sword, a varnished length of wood. The name Azita is inlaid in silver. Uh, Merdad's practice sword, a varnished length of wood. The name Merdad is inlaid with gold. Natalia's practice sword, a varnished length of wood. The name Natalia has been carved into the flat. Uh, Fraser's practice sword, uh, sword, a varnished length of wood. The name Fraser has been carved into the flat. You'll notice some of these are associated with librarians. I don't think that's a mistake. Deer Day's foil, a pin sharp length of flexible steel. The blade is inscribed Deer Day. Torg's foil, a pin sharp length of flexible steel. The blade is inscribed Torg. Red quarterstaff, a long staff marked with bands of red. Dappled quarterstaff, a long staff marked with bands of black and white. Poacher's bow, a very practical weapon. Hunter's bow, a very practical weapon. Match flintlock pistols, a pair of pistols. The style and maker's mark suggest late 17th century. The initials MD are marked in silver above the wolf's agent of the Baron's Brankrug. Green's practice sword, varnished length of wood. Red drake shield, painted leather, riveted to heavy iron. Green stag shield, painted leather, riveted by heavy iron, or to heavy iron, and golden lion shield, painted leather, riveted to heavy iron. The first threshold, a horn double axe, stands alone in a sandy desert. 
Dappled Practice Sword, a leaf-shaped wooden sword of considerable age. Red Practice Sword, leaf-shaped wooden sword of considerable age. Sentry's Bow, a fearsome weapon. Crossbow, an antique crossbow from Hush House's early, early baronial period. Sebastian swords, matching 18th century cutlasses. The initials SD are engraved on the blade near the hilt. Oh, still practice equipment. And I think that's it for items. And then, of course, we have Natalia Brulot. This bust is cast in iron. I'm, I actually think in my other playthrough, I've had some difficulty placing Natalia. So there's a hint here in the 19th century, but 19th century is a... That's a long time, um, and it's not good to assume certain, you know, certain people fall in certain lines. So uh, my usual deal is I wait to read a book that specifically says the line. And I normally, like, there are books that I'll, like, have in the library, but, like, basically when I'm focusing on that book and it gives that information, that's the one that I find most useful to say, okay, we're moving someone over here. So there are actually, I think it's just one statue now, but there's one where I have the book, which I haven't read the book yet, and I would be able to move it inside here. But this is just one of these cases where I'm trying not to let knowledge that I've had from, you know, earlier, like other playthroughs of the game. Where I can, I would like to try and do a playthrough that somewhat reflects, you know, a, a reasonable first attempt at playing this game without just sort of knowing all of the details. There are some things that are inescapable, like, you know, the fact that I know that there's a desk up here which has nectar aspect um, and s some of these rooms that I'm going to be unlocking don't seem to have a like massive significance compared to some of the other you know the others that I might be working with. But still, I, I still think it's reasonable to sort of say, okay, let's let's not just move things in place and sort of just say, well, a miracle occurred, and and the librarian knew exactly where to put it. It's just nice to sort of follow follow up. Um, as as they become available also it's not a race like this is the most relaxed game that you can possibly play like it's you know um there's there's no need to rush these things okay i am going to buy uh or hire the orchard keeper right away in autumn orchard keepers come to sell their wares at brand krug shilling will buy one's help hail now that's uh not something you see every day so that may have some implications on the edge stuff that i can read might be a little ambitious to try an eight edge text, but let's see what we've got in the collection. Okay. Might be that eight's the best I can do. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little reluctant to do this just because this does um, get in the way of using Mrs. Kill, but let's let's play around with this idea here. So between the memory and the element of the soul, we would have four. And then we would add a... Well, okay, this is one of these funny ones, right? So technically the way that this would work, Arab plus Hail is four, and then we add the uh, Cucurbit Barrette which would be five at which point we'd say well okay the way if i wanted to make this happen what i would do is i would take an arab i would take um a contradiction or whatever you know whatever memory i thought would give me some some edge i guess the one that i really know is fear excuse me that's only one, but whatever, you know, we'll, we'll work with what we've got. So let's, let's say we only had one edge. Um, so Arab plus fear is two, cougar bit beredge, beret is three, hail would be six. Okay. Yeah. With six, actually, we're even, we're still short there, but yeah, I would, what I would do is I would take the memory. I would then use the hail as a potential input. Um, but yeah, the fact of the matter is, is that I'm really not in a position to, um, to be reading a uh, an edge text. Of course, I do have perniculate. Deadly, use gloves to read text produced with this pigment, an ink of power, sometimes considered an unsanctioned ink. And so I can basically reduce the difficulty of any, every, any given edge text by four, but it would be nice if I had a recipe for making perniculate. With that in mind, though, there is one thing that I could do 
which would sort of help me a little bit in terms of my understanding of the different um, different recipes. I can just catalog all the... Uh, as it turns out, I don't actually have that many edge. Oh, actually, okay. We're a little bit better at this than I thought we were, so let me see if I can... There is no way that's working, and I don't have the alchemists set. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the found... Well, never say never. Okay, but I don't think I'd be able to add the ink in this case. Shows what I know. But I wouldn't be able to add the leaf. I also don't think I have the cat's claw, which would have been more helpful here. Yeah, so I think I'm I'm sort of back in the same Well, okay, so I suppose I'm not really convinced that I'm at a spot where I can make replacement replacement ink, but it's maybe not so far out of my reach as I thought before, is maybe the fair way of putting it. Uh, either way, I'm not going to be able to do anything about that now. So let's just leave the hail aside and let's focus on what I want to do with the rest of the day. So uh, I am still going to bring Mrs. Kill in. Um, I am going to need both the satisfaction and the... Um, Taking a minute to think this through. Trist will do the trick. So satisfaction, and then we also need to read Wrapped in the King for the Nectar memory. Actually, the one thing I might have wanted to consider, and it's not too late. So I needed six edge for the gloomy stare. Denzel has two. Yes. Okay, so after I get the oh, three people working on... Nah, it's worth it. Um, excuse me. Ah, very sleepy. Uh, okay, we are also going to try and juggle Denzel in this rather crowded, crowded group, but I do want to make sure that I get the... Um, the Orchard Keeper leveled up first. So let's start with that. Collaborate health. I'm ready to lend my limbs. Boosts heart, scale, and nectar. Mrs. Gill stands ready to help. You always cheer me up, she says morosely. So we'll probably wind up using the core to recover pears. Actually, I guess I can do that now. Or, well, I guess I've already paid for the... Nope. Okay. Because Denzel needs heart. Yes, Denzel will talk about practical matters, although he prefers to sit in silence. A shelling will buy his help for the day, so I don't need to pay to recover. What do you need? Okay. Busy, busy, busy day. But I think this will work out nicely for us. And I'm probably going to wind up going a little bit over, but uh, it'll, I don't know, hopefully because it's the weekend, this won't be too much of an interruption to your day. All right, so we'll offer them a nice drop. I can offer my assistant something to drink. So we need the memory. We'll use the pears soon. So Garden Keeper, Denzel, Mrs. Kill will be the order in which we do the upgrades, but we're still very early in the day, so I'm not too worried.
Okay, the Rose... Oop. The Rose of Nuriel, a volume of collected teachings from the Sisterhood of the Knot, that arcane contemplative order that existed in all histories, but in some was very powerful indeed. This was recorded by Nuriel and dedicated to St. Tryphon. St. Tryphon, Nuriel explains, performed secret miracles in the name of she who bleeds and bears, and she who opens. Thus St. Tryphon opened the way to the house of the sun. Thus St. Tryphon underwent the great birth and ascension to immortality. St. Tryphon began his ascension by passing the horn door. St. Tryphon continued his ascension by learning the invocation theatic, which Nuriel does not here record on account of its extreme holiness. And Nuriel explains grimly to achieve the seven marks of the great birth, St. Tryphon consumed those whose soul had left them, and even those in whom the soul remained. Okay, that's satisfaction for you. We should also have the Wrapped in the King. Detailed accounts of secret bacchanals and ecstatic dances observed in necropolises and graveyards in southern Europe, in Egypt, and in Anatolia. The author is a self-confessed ghoul, an eater of buried flesh. He claims to have witnessed the dances while at his feasting. The dances draw from the traditions of the mysteries of the cults of Isis and of Sybil, but include both symbolic and literal flayings, and the human heart is always central in the rites. The author punctuates his accounts with queasy, queasily sensuous descriptions of his own interrupted feasts. At these feasts, uh, gr sorry, at these greater feasts, a black pig is always crowned as king before its slaying. On this occasion, its heart was weighed in the balance against a knot of feathers, and its skin became a cape for the officiant. Its flesh was left for the crows, but I must confess my interest was not in its carcass, but in the perfumed flesh of the milliner laid fresh in the earth. An earth sign in the tracks of beasts, the con convulsions of his own carapace, the egg vein, and its shell shadow, the many-eyed one found the signs which can be history. An earth sign is an auspice traced on the cloaked shape of the earth, perceptible to the sensitive, interpreted only by the wise. Okay. Lots to do. Now this worries me, so we're at seven already. And I needed nine. Oh, that's right, I haven't used the tool yet. Most of the stuff that I did here, it's not that I can't replace it, but it's a little disappointing if I if I wind up losing losing it. Now the good news with Denzel is I only need the six edge here. I can offer my assistant something to eat. This will also uh, increase their aspects. It's also just friendly. So with Denzel, we'll need two actions, one for the hail and then one for the tool. And then Mrs. Kill, we will need the Arab, the satisfaction, and the, um, and the tool. So that'll be 90 seconds. So basically two and a half minutes for the remaining remaining followers. The good news is I don't know if there's that much more we can do with Nectar uh, for the the next little while. So even if we try to go lower we'll probably just have to be patient. For offer a tool. I can lend my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. So ideally we will get Denzil sorted out right around the time that this room becomes open so that we can put him to work right away. And then we can use Mrs. Kill before the end of the day. We're at the halfway mark, midday, before the Great Division. This was the sixth hour, when the priests led hymns to the sun in splendor. Now noon, as they say, is not as it was. Perhaps the new king will change that. So we still have quite a bit of the day left, but it, it's one of these cases where you just want to be on top of everything. Okay. So. The roots here are a labyrinth of years. How long is it since anyone passed this way? So we unlock. Denzel, let's have a chat about the weather. I know you're you like talking. Denzel the blacksmith will lend me his strength for the day. More use talk about the weather, more useful than one might expect, especially in Britain. As you can see. Halfway point doesn't seem, it seems like there's so much more of the day available and then you start seeing this stuff happen and you feel very nervous about your ability to get through everything in the day. Although again, it's worth remembering that if we don't get through everything with Mrs. Kill, we haven't committed anything that we can't replace. 
Okay, so let's give him a tool to work with. Incidentally, it's always nice whenever you've got a character that you don't use very often, it doesn't hurt to take a quick look in the slot. So in this case, um, Denzel is also able to work with metal, as you might expect with a blacksmith. But we're interested in the Cucurbit Barrette, a vessel with an ambiguous history. And I can lend my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. So that will allow him to open up the gloomy stair. It has long been a holy place, but the Madrigad has withdrawn her favor now, and a chilliness waits here where dawn will not touch it. Only once it is pacified can I safely pass, and from there we'll try and talk with Mrs. Kill as much as we can to get her leveled up. But again, that's the target of opportunity here. So long as the people who I've paid to get the work done get the work done, I, I feel like it's worthwhile. Okay, let's take a look at what we found here. The Deepwell Descent. Each of the great roots here carries a garden of fruiting fungus. Great black bumblebees buzz improbably between them, gathering spores, droning peace. Sand, an hourglass, of course, is sand contained by sand. An Atlantic amber, sunset's colors, pine's blood. It's three lantern gem. Uh, we've got a tall parcel tightly wrapped in oil cloth, so we'll work on that. And the wheel-filled spring, which if we were to go here would be our first dawn period uh, room. The pool here is filled with rusting and rotting wheels. Was this some attempt to block it, or were the wheels thrown down the well above as offerings? In either case, I'll, uh, it'll need to be cleared out, and suitable offerings made to appease the powers to whom this place is holy. The other possibility is, of course, the moon aspect, and I have not yet tried some of the higher level hirelings, so I think I'm going to leave that be for now. I'm not really sure that there's any... So the emphasis on the gardener or the orchard keepers right now has been that there's been a lot of very straightforward steps that I can take to be able to get them to, to basically do what I need. And we've sort of exhausted that now, so all of the food that I can give them, there are two nectars, but there's also like the pale marrow, which also happens to have a winter aspect. And you'll notice there aren't a lot of winter aspected foods. So at that point, you might want to ask the question, like, is this the sort of thing that I want to, you know, I want to use with a, you know, with a gardener knowing that I might be able to use this with someone else uh, later, right? There are people you can hire that have four nectar. Um, so I'm going to leave this be for now. Uh, it doesn't mean that I won't come back and try to open this, but we've we've gained access to a couple of more rooms which were unique to Autumn, and then I'll be able to make a decision as to whether or not this is sufficiently interesting for me to follow uh, follow up on. I think, though, probably spending some quality time on this side of the map, particularly the Rattling Bridge, which actually doesn't take that much for me to open, uh, would be... Um, would be time well spent. We will open this when we can, but I am conscious of the fact that I'm well over time. So, uh, this tool has boosted their aspects appropriately. Let's get you opening up the gloomy stair. Finally, Mrs. Kill. So, we'll talk about the Arab first. My pride will find an echo in theirs. So, Arab, satisfaction, tool, and then we're done. And if I... Bef if it winds up being before we he hear the bell, I know I'm there for sure. Drat. I think we're going to miss it. But we'll see. I should be making use of this FET, uh, so let's use the... Not the harp. Do the same trick with the Tissane. Hush house still rings with thwarted desires. I'll mix that into a Tissane. I could have gone to the, you know, to the walk on the moor, but... Actually, I could have opened the package too. That was probably rather silly of me, but... That's life. We'll sort it out. So this gets her up to six. Oh no, hang on. It's one minute from when that sound goes. So I should be able to give her the scales before the sun sets. For some reason I keep thinking these things take, um, 
take a minute. All right, I can lend my assistant something to help increasing their abilities. So let's take a look at what we just unlocked. The Glorious Stair. Each stair tread is decorated with a quotation from the Book of Suns so that the congregation might be edified as they ascend. The quotes are worn to half legibility by the passage of all those worshipful feet, which may be why some of these quotations differ troublingly from any orthodox version. It has, of course, been claimed that the Sisterhood of the Knot, who first held the Isle, also held a copy of the long-suppressed Sheridic version of the book. And in this room we have the Shrine to the Madrigad. The Madrigad is the hour which cannot be unbalanced, which quells and quiets, which comes before the sun. There is something kind of... So when you take a look at these things, right, it's always interesting to look at the shrines and see what aspects they have. So to the Shrine to St. Januarius, St. Januarius is the name which was wounded, the name of exceptions, the little god at the door. So Rose, Sky, Heart, and Knock. We've got the Shrine to the Madrigad. The Madrigad is the hour which cannot be unbalanced, which quells and quiets, which comes before the sun. We also see here, whatever is not necessary shall be quenched, so the forge maybe isn't a surprise. Uh, then Sky and Winter. I always think it's a little odd that these things don't have a uh, lantern. I probably should think about that a little bit. Uh, and then it, uh, Soul Skill, Memory, Devotion. This takes Omens and Marks. So I think I've only really found Marks at uh, Shrines. And then Remembrance. And then we have some Candles. So Snowflake Candle, a Silver Candle, Soft as Snow. And then the Wind Prowled Gallery, that would take 8 Forge, 8 Lantern, or 8 Sky. So certainly a greater challenge than most of the things that we've done so far, but there's certainly weather that will take us to that point. Although I will say, today's been a pretty good day as far as unlocking rooms is con excuse me, concerned. So we've kind of hit the limits of what we can do with the Orchard Keeper, at least without giving up things that might be considered precious. Uh, we are about to open the last room that we said would be straightforward for Mrs. Kill, and we managed to even get one of Denzel's rooms unlocked a little earlier than I thought we were going to. So it's best when it's warm, but it'll keep. And here we go. This duel has boosted their aspects appropriately. This is one of the reasons why it's nice to keep the easier things uh, set aside. The Rose Haunted Hall. The room is rife with climbing roses tangled in the lamps sprawled across the table. The blossoms are deep, deep red. One of those colors not often seen in waking life, and their perfume makes my head swim. Another of Van Loren's protections? Or something else? In any case, it'll be arduous, careful work to clear it. So tomorrow would be nice to repair some of the, you know, some of the, uh, not damage, but it would be nice to kind of get some of the things that I gave up uh, back. So, you know, pick some pears, open a, open the parcel, get the earth sign back. But we have quite a bit more freedom tomorrow, just given the fact that we, you know, we, we're not under the pressure, pressure to hire certain people at certain times. We might let the weather decide what we, uh, what we decide to do. And in fact, we may get to a point where I feel a little bit safer risking uh, certain, you know, certain texts, given what the weather is. Okay, so cloudy day doesn't actually give me that much. Uh, but let's take a look. I know I'm, I'm really pushing the limits here, but we're only a few seconds away. There we go. Okay, the refectory. Here the whole curia used to meet, the librarian and the secretary solvent, vigilant and enigmatic, sometimes even the secretary nunkiant, uh, through, uh, sorry, that the duties of that often kept him away from the house. But there has only ever been one secretary persistent, and she never liked to eat in company. That was in the good times of the curious heyday. In later years, the governor of the jail would sit at one end, the librarian at the other, and the clock would tick away the long science silences between their words. So this has a night mirror, an oddly dim mirror, a maskwatch clock reputedly crafted for the Mask of Masks during the Great Writhing, a tall candlestick, elegant simplicity, the hatching human figures crawl from a clamshell, Portrait of a behatted lady. The more prominent the headgear, the closer to the glory. A uh, vase of lilies, an elegant ornament. The refectory fireplace. The fire mutters companionably in the grate. 
So I've always found this to be an interesting room. I've always wondered if there's something special about it that I haven't yet realized, or if it's just, you know, one room uh, leading to the things that you'll find inside the heart haunted room. In any case, we'll need eight grail, eight heart, or eight uh, moon, certainly well within our ability to uh, to access. So I'm not too worried there. In fact, with the witching to sane, we can already do that uh, with Mrs. Kill for today. And then in terms of other steps, I would like to... So I have inks that I can use already for the rattling bridge, but it would be sort of nice to make my own ink just so that I can sort of show that I can do that. Um, that won't be too hard. And then when I can, it's sort of a question in terms of hiring someone. It's not particularly difficult to get eight forge uh, lantern or sky. In fact, I think the eight lantern would be the most straightforward because we take Reverend Timothy with us to Faust with two, uh, a memory with two. So that's uh, six. And then it's a question of getting a... Um, seven with the mirror scope and then the question is where does the eight come from that can come from a candle that can come from a beverage food there's a number of different ways that i can do that in fact uh, dandelion wine would give us the lantern that we need but all of these seem like very good questions to answer uh, on another another broadcast i know this was a particularly long one i do apologize for that but i do thank you all uh, for your patience we will be back on monday for another series or another set of entries to the series for book of hours uh, and as always um, well sorry i think i did say thank you for watching but i do hope you all have a wonderful weekend please take care